everything. All right, guys, we are back in Learn HTML and CSS part one in the CSS box model content. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Mm, we'll skip this first page. Let's go ahead and go ahead. All right. What do they mean by content? Okay, so we're going to be learning about padding and margins and things like that. Padding is basically that box that we have kind of that we don't necessarily see unless we assign a border. We can actually uh, apply padding to, to it on the top part, the left part, the right part, and the bottom part, or all around, to give it more space, to make the box a little bit larger, to keep the content aspect a little bit more. It's going to be in the center, but we want it to, unless we do certain things, we want it to give it some padding and margin is kind of the opposite where we from that box from outside the box we want to pad outside the box padding's inside the box that's what we're going to be doing right now so you'll see right here that some of this is a little bit on the outside we're going to go ahead and jump in to our styling here and go to the id banner dash content remember it's an id because because it is a hashtag here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna give a padding, padding of 30px. So you'll see right here, we give it some padding. You'll see now that this is kind of fitting in there because we, we padded out every, the left side, the right side, the whole deal. Now, similar to how we did the border, the the, we can also do padding of various sizes as well. So maybe we want to pad only certain parts. We can do that. Uh, set the padding on the top bottom of the banner content. Selector. Paragraphs 2, 30 pixels. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and jump back to here. Where were we? Um, so remember, top is 30, and we want the, it goes top, right, bottom, left. So we want 10px for the right, 30px for the bottom, and 10px for the left. You'll see it's changed once more. So we have a nice big padding on here, and not so much padding on the right. So you can also, instead of doing all four at once, say you only want to add padding to the top, you can use padding dash top and the same thing with the right, bottom, and left. So let's see here. So on the byline, let's go ahead and find the byline class. Here we are. And we want to go ahead and set only the top and bottom padding. So we can do padding dash top and we set that to 20px and we can do padding dash bottom and we can set that to 20px as well and this is on James Jace let's see if we can find this guy control F J alright so here we are here and we run this it we're going to see now we only have padding on the bottom and the top it gives a little bit more space for our content. So we just talked about padding. Now we're going to talk about margin. That's the outside padding, essentially, is how to think of it. Padding itself is the inside. We want to put our content farther away from the, the border. While the margin is, we want to take our border and all the other elements, push those away. So let's go ahead and set the margin uh, of list items. So here's our li. We're just going to go ahead and set a margin here of 5 pixels. Now this works exactly in the same fashion as padding. We're going to have a top, bottom, uh, bottom, right, left, all that sort of stuff with the margin. And we can input it as so if we need to be specific like that. So you see there's a lot of bit of spacing here. And what we want is to change that up. So 
We want top margin to be zero, right margin to be 20, bottom margin to be zero, and then left margin to be 20. So let's go ahead and run that real quick. And so now we have these dots. I'm not sure where they came from, or if they were always there. <laughs> um, but the margin, these were probably uh, off the screen. This is what was probably happening. All right, so we also have this margin left, margin top, margin right, margin bottom that we can do. So as of right now, we're still only setting the top. You can go ahead and change this to margin left, margin right if you'd like, but this will work as well. Which is probably how I would do it if I was gonna set it to zero PX. So I think this is better long term because you may change how you're styling things and then you don't have to add anything, you just have to change this one section. Alright, so we're going to target the banner so that the element centers. Now, to center an element, you can go ahead and just set margin to auto usually. Let's go ahead and jump down to here. So we want this to be centered. As of right now, it doesn't look to be. Excuse. So now our div here, our content, is now centered within the div it's in. So in here, we're gonna go ahead and reset the default values of the style sheet. So um, this tells you about something called the user agent, which is the technical term for a browser, and basically goes in that ag user agent style sheets are browser style sheets built in. And what we're actually gonna do right now is go ahead and reset some of the things that are set by default in there. So like this margin, we're gonna reset, and padding, we're gonna reset. Let's go ahead and run this to see what it looks like. Not much of a noticeable difference in my opinion, but hey. So we're going to be talking about two things. We're going to talk about inline elements and block elements. Ooh, excuse me. Most elements are block elements, meaning they kind of will take up a certain amount of portion and they all can kind of have a border around them and things like that. And then there's things like text that aren't really block elements, but how do I put this? So the dis well, you know, let's just look at some examples. <laughs> That's probably the best way. So we have inline block, which let's read that causes block level elements be to behave like an inline element, but retains the features of a block level element. There's basically going to be times where you're going to need to treat things as blocks or as like a div would be an example of a block. And to do that, sometimes you're going to need to use a display inline block. So we're going to do that for the property of list items here. We're going to go ahead and go display and assign it inline dash block. Just going to run that. You'll see right here, now everything is lined up. So what happened here was we are treating these now as elements. We go into here, each one of these, local and national, these are all within one. And then this li class logo does something. And then what we're doing is we're basically assigning them to, to be together. We're saying, look, stop treating them like a normal UL, treat them as a block element. In this case, block elements fill up as much space as possible. The reason this they're not all in one line or two lines is because this is custom CSS, but that's why these are all lined up together like so. Um, it's, it's one of those things that is, will take you a second to fully understand what's going on here, but uh, display is something you're gonna need to get very comfortable with and what it does um, as you develop your CSS. So we can do hidden and visible to hide certain things. So notice that the list donate has a class of donate. All right, let's go ahead. 
Yes, so there's an LI class here called Donate. Let's see. Oh. Alright, so they want us to define the class here. So what we'll do is we're going to add a selector class. And because this is a class, we're going to go ahead and use the dot. And then we want to set visibility to hidden. Now when we run this, this should hide this. And you'll see right there, it's no longer there. Now you may be saying, why would I even put it in there? Well, as you go on and you make more... What we're dealing with right now is called static content. Content that's not really going to change at all. Now, as you move forward in your programming in HTML, you're going to be dealing with dynamic content. Content that's going to change based off what the user does and certain and things like that. And that's why certain things are going to be hidden and viewed. You're going to be changing those values with JavaScript and things like that. But, uh, all right, so what did we learn? We learned about padding. Padding is very important. It's going to be used quite often in your CSS to make things look nice. Same thing with margin. We also learned about display, which um, they don't really go over too much in detail here. I suggest going on like W3 schools and really just playing around with some of their interactive demos to get very comfortable with display. In all honesty, to this day, I'm still not super comfortable with it, but um, it is what it is, and I, I suggest you be better at it than I am. And then visibility, um, something I actually uh, haven't used too much. Um, in my in my coding experience but a pretty straightforward concept as well by default your visibility is shown unless you set it to hidden so I hope you guys found this helpful in uh, going over content and how to kind of position that using our CSS don't forget to like and subscribe and share the video if you think you know somebody who would find it helpful and a special thanks to you supporting me on patreon I couldn't do it without you I'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching all right guys so we are back in learn html and css part one the css box model changing the box model so it looks like we're going to be doing a review of what we learned let's go ahead and jump into the next slide and see what's going on here we have these nice sort of um this nice i, I have to give code academy credit they have very good um, animations, just not animations, but uh, images here to kind of showcase what you're supposed to be seeing. You're seeing the border, you're seeing the padding here, the content width, the actual rendered width once we add everything together. So just something to keep in mind. Um, it really il illustrates the box model, uh, essentially the, the whole element and the space it takes up. So you notice here that uh, it goes on to kind of showcase, and it's showing the CSS here as well. So we have a width, we have the padding, we have the height, we have a border, box sizing, all that sort of stuff. So again, it, it showcases everything going on here. So what we want to do here, let's actually implement it in the browser. So it looks like we're going to be doing the border dash box. So what we want to do is go ahead and apply it to everything. And uh, remember the universal sort of selector is the asterisk. And then we'll do border dash box. So I'm not quite sure what the point of this was. Um, I guess maybe just kind of a review, but uh, I'll probably just tag this on the end of another video. Thanks for watching the video. Special thanks to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Definitely check them out at devmountain.com. If you're looking for a boot camp that's in front-end development, iOS, or UX, go ahead and give them a shot. Tuition includes housing, so you can get up and go and fully immerse yourself in the program. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.